You guys see, I mean, there's two levels of this. One level is, can you do the brute force math work? Yes. All right. Second level is, do you understand the idea behind these? We went over where some of these came from, but you can see the idea, like I just said, this is related to the derivative of the position. So this is related to its velocity. Is that cool? This is related to the derivative of the derivative of the position. So this is related to its acceleration, in a way. <laughs> what happened? All right, right there, we got to all agree with that. That's not that bad. R prime is velocity. That's what T is. So if I take a derivative of T, that is related to its acceleration. It's the second derivative. Yes, sir? So that's what you meant, the one that's inside the concrete, that's the unit. Yeah, that's the normal, and that's why it always points as the curve is, because that's what's, there's something you can think of physically, like, what's making this curve that way, it's acceleration yeah. pointing in, because that's the way it's changing. Yes? Now, the actual acceleration could be, be, be pointing in a totally different direction, so it'll be kind of in right? Well, there's two things. This is a unit normal, right? Yeah. And it's been unitized a couple times, yeah. right? Uh, but it should still be pointing in the direction of the actual acceleration. So if you take R double prime, in fact, I don't know if this is one of the homework questions or not, but it should be something about relating this to that, seeing if they're, what the angle between them would be. So it'll it at least partially be pointing in the direction. Yes, I like it. So that's what I meant by it's, it's not exactly the acceleration, but it's related to it. And you can you can cut, you can see why this 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 uh, repeated differentiation is what we're kind of used to. It's just not attacking R directly. So that's why it's not exactly the same thing. Um, okay. So what do we have? We got this so far. So now to do this, I need t prime. So what's that going to be? Negative yeah, negative cosine t over rad 2. Negative sine, negative sine t over rad 2. Zero. Zero. I like that. <coughs> and of course, what's the length? I need the length of that for this. It'll be cosine squared over 2 plus sine squared over 2. So that's 1 root equals 1 over 2 times 2. So that'd be 1. Square root of that. Yeah. Alright, so guys, guys, stay with me. Uh, square root of 1 over 2. Stay with me, you ready? X equals cosine t, y equals sine t. Uh, what does that create? Tell me several things. What so it makes a circle of radius one. Uh, what if I put x equal two? Y equal two. Circle of radius two. Right? Because it'd be four cos x squared plus four sine squared is four squared of four is two. So, so do you get the general idea? So whatever number I put here, if I put a there, it's going to be circle of radius. So what's a? One half, one over root two. So the length of this is going to be one over root two. Like All right. So then the normal vector. My height check. It's going to be t prime divided by. Oh, you're the dead one, aren't you? Poor little dude. Yes. If you divide this by this, yeah. all the root two is canceled. I like it. So you get negative cosine, negative sine, zero. So I, 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 we could take a look. How do you show very quickly that uh, the normal vector is tangent to the tangent vector. Uh, not tangent, but the normal vector is orthogonal to the tangent vector. Dot product. Dot product. So if you did the dot product between these two things, 
You get, you get cosine sine over rad 2 <coughs> minus cosine sine over rad 2 plus 0 equals 0. All right, let me stop there. So that was the thing we said earlier. That's just one little example. It's not a proof. But you can always do that to make sure you're in the right track. This must be orthogonal to this. That's the whole idea. I'm trying to create this, this uh, system that we're used to where they're all orthogonal to each other. Uh, let's see, so that's the normal vectors, that's n, awesome. So now I want to cross those, whichever way, some of you guys have memorized the 1, 3, 2, 1, 3, whatever, I love it, so I love the looks of getting, some of you guys have. Uh, me, I just always set it up just because. first. I just do negative C over rad 2, negative S over rad 2, and 0. Just use C and S for sine and cosine when you have so much crap already happening. What is sine Oh, is I looking in the wrong place? Oh, I'm looking at a T prime. T prime, T is just going to be negative S over rad 2 and C over rad 2. Okay. Thank you, Dave. And then we've got N, which is the one we just did here. So negative C, negative S, 0. So whatever way you find the cross product, you do that. All right, so this is how I do it. So let's see, my eyes are going to be zero. Wait, oh, I, sorry. Wait, K, isn't it supposed to be rad 2 over 2 or 1 over rad 2 for the first K? Yeah. No. Oh, let me see. I was looking at the wrong thing okay. first, so yeah, it should be 1 over rad 2. Thank you. So let's see what I got for I here. We got 0 minus negative S. Over, so I got sine over rad 2 I. So I got zero here, and I got minus negative sine over rad two. <coughs> Put a little t in there. I like it. Of course, you're going to be nice to yourself. Keep things organized. I'm just trying to splat all this thing up here. You can see though how it's just the computations are relatively easy. It should be. Uh, what do we got? J's will be negative cosine over rad two. And zero. And then the K's will be, ooh, this gets interesting. Uh, what do I got here? First off, I got sine squared over rad two. Minus negative cosine squared, so plus cosine squared over rad two. So I got one over rad two there. Craziness. So the obviously, obviously, this is just one example. A lot of vector functions that we've looked at have sines and cosines and so forth. Uh, if they were elliptical, it would be a little bit more disgusting as you went through. Things wouldn't consolidate as much. So, I mean, the vector function that you're using will change. But the process won't change. I mean, you just always attack it the same way. So we just found the vectors that comprise the TNB frame of motion. So that TNB frame is the frame that the people on that ship exist in. Because they are moving with that ship. So as, you, as we follow the animation, that is how they experience the universe, is according to that frame. That's why it's kind of important to, to deal with that frame. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, just to verify that uh, the normal is orthogonal to the tangent. You can do the dot product. That's a quick little intermediate check to make sure that everything's on the right track. If they are not orthogonal, something's gone wrong. So going back to what you were talking about, that's why they need to know aerodynamics and, like, say, you're in the air. Yeah, this T and B frame is used... Uh, yeah. Yes, in things like that, where you have people or something on something that's mo moving in possibly three dimensions. Normally three dimensions, right? 
roller coaster design, even. Yes? Would it be useful to find the uh, <coughs> unit normal and basically do the same process to get the like n prime over the magnitude of n prime? Oh, take this one step higher? Because that would also be orthogonal to n, but not necessarily t. Would, would that be useful in any situation? I'm sure it could be. Uh, I can't off the top of my head imagine where, but yeah, I mean, you could take any of these derivatives further and you can figure out what meaning they would have, right? Uh, in fact, if you did one, anybody know what one derivative pass, bless you, one derivative pass acceleration is? Sure. Uh, what? Kind of like the acceleration of the acceleration. Yeah, so I, I love the name. It, it reminds me of my first car. <laughs> <laughs> when I went to accelerate, it was like, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so I was like, that was the definition of my car. It didn't have, it went straight from pe from velocity to jerk. It didn't, there was no intermediate. It just did two derivatives very quickly. I was like, wow, car, you're smart, but please just go smooth. Please. Uh, okay. So yeah, you could do something related to that. Yeah. It's a little bit for because I know a lot of the homework problems covered and y equals f of x and can for that. And yeah, yeah. There's a reformulation if you're in, in just the y equals, uh, if you just have a y equals f of x. Uh, where'd they put that? Bottom of page 905. A little formula for that. Is that cool? I, I didn't really want to. Okay. It's just a plug and shut kind of thing. It's nothing overly tremendous that I'm going to have to have you re remember. So, uh, we're talking about curvature. Unfreeze. So down here they have what curvature looks like in the case of, if you're just in the xy plane. So they show you the derivation, but this is what it would look like if you had it. And that's, I just, you know, there's some homework assigned for it. It's just plug and shut situation. I just want to show you that the more you know about the situation you're in, the more simplified your formula should become. Uh, page 905. So that's just another iteration of the formula if you're given that you're just living in the y and the xy plane. You can do similar things if you're in other planes, even planes that are diagonal to known planes. You can simplify formulas if everything you're doing lives in a plane. So we... And again, this is more of a general idea. It's nothing that I need you to remember. But any formula that we create that's based on any vector function moving in any direction can be simplified if you have more information about its motion. So if it lives in a plane, then it should be simplified pretty decently. And it, and it does. I like it. So uh, on the homework level, it's just a plug and shut problem. Okay. So I mean, part of part of this is just again, like I said, if you're all, at all interested in going in that direction as a, as a field of study and possibly as a job, you should start to look these things up. You're going to be able to understand a lot more about what they're discussing now that we've talked about uh, cross products and dot products and so forth, right? Okay, maybe. Anybody interested in like aerodynamics or uh, yes? All right, there you go. Do it. I like it. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Do I really want to ask? I'll let you guys look at that. <laughs> All right. All right. That's enough of that. I need to get to section uh, thirteen point four. I'm desperately trying to get into chapter fourteen today, possibly. 13.4 finally just does a lot of what we've already done and just discusses it from the standpoint of particle motion. So a lot of it should look very familiar. Uh, it's the same stuff we've done in 13.3, except now it's applied to actually being velocity and acceleration. Everything we were talking about, we kept coming up with those words, but that's not necessarily what that meant. If it is velocity, then it does mean acceleration and so forth if you take a derivative. So 13.4 just says specifically, yes, that's what you're talking about. Uh, a couple of interesting things come up. Um, first off, just to help 
get us grounded for this, uh, our prime would be what? What can we call our prime now in 134 motions of particles? Velocity. Velocity. So we can just call it velocity. Let me be careful my vectors. And then, of course, our double prime, which is V prime, is the acceleration. I like it. Cool. So working backwards, let me get rid of this. I'm not going to use this for a while. Jesse's like, holy crap. There's a whole side of the ring. Um, if I was given the acceleration to be negative g j, which some of us should know that's true, living on the earth as we do, uh, we're all being pulled down in the y direction according to uh, acceleration due to gravity. Right? And we're being the creative genius, we already call it g. Why? So on average, it's uh, yes, sir. I'm sorry. Why do we go, why, why the y? Why yeah. Z? Okay. Yeah, that's right. So that's the case out of J. Well, we're talking about. All right, let's do this. We're looking at it. Just two. Yes, we're looking at two D right now. My bad. I like that. So we're not going to bring three D into this yet. Uh, we could. I don't know why we don't. At least on this first little run through, we don't. To be honest. Thank you for that, though. Yeah. So we're looking at it like like uh, very basic, already, uh, you know, you throw a ball and it comes to land somewhere, you know, woo -hoo. and you throw the ball at a certain angle. Uh, yeah, projectile motion, so you, uh, you have a certain angle with the horizontal, call that alpha, and you throw it with some velocity, v. Mm, yeah, you just call it. Jeff. So, on one level, we can just investigate the x and the y components of this velocity. What, what, what would the x component of this velocity be? Let me not do that. Yeah. So, it'd be v cosine alpha. cosine alpha. So, this is the x component, let's say x component of the speed. Maybe cosine alpha. What about the y component of the speed? It'd be amazingly enough. Amazing. Amazing. All right. Uh, All right. So, so another kind of way to come at it, and that does not describe the motion. That just describes the initial velocity broken up into parts. Right. So, I need to actually describe the motion. So, if I work with this, I can get an equation of motion. By integrating, how many times? Twice. Twice. I like. It. So if we integrate once, we'll get back to v of t. Yeah. So what do we get there? Integrating with respect to what? T. T. That's my that's my parameter. So you get negative g t. Oh, and this is, uh, let me see, this is only, oh yeah, okay, okay, well, let's not call it C, let's call it G naught, yeah, V naught, <coughs> be more specific, it is a constant vector in terms of what we just did, but it's still going to be, it's uh, the velocity, like, um, okay, so if we do one more integration, we'll end up at. Uh, now we use R instead of S, just because. Yes, ma'am. So just be not not because then is like a function of t, so we'll use the derivative of some function, not as just this of t. Do it one more time, sorry. So be not of t. So it should be v not not v not of t. Because when you write v naught of t, it's like a function, and when we're taking the derivative, it's like it should be a, it will not exceed it. It should be v naught, not v naught t. Oh, 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 okay, I'm with you. I understand what you're saying. Uh, so, it could be v of t. we are, how it says, we're integrating from uh, 0 to t. Yeah. If, I think if you put v, t, v of t 0, that might work, like inside. If you only have one initial. You're saying that looks like the function that yeah. you should be integrating again. 
Well, because like, that's not a function. In it. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, okay, okay. Because uh, it's a it's a constant, not a function. Yeah. All right. All right. Which is that? Okay. Uh, so one more integration. What will we get here? One half gt squared. Yeah. This should look very familiar to some of you guys. Uh, not two. Plus your initial position. And, and, yeah, exactly. Plus some some other thing that we'll call that the book we'll just call it the same thing the book does. Who we'll calls it? D. I guess for distance off the ground. Could that not be R <coughs> Or like, like for initial position? Yeah, it, it okay. should be. But again, I'm just going to do the same thing. The book they they got a big old D there for some reason. In fact, they get rid of it, and then in the next example, they say, "Oh yeah, we need that." So it, it, I'm going to just keep that there, and you can call it R not. I love it. Um, oh oh oh, where's that one thing? Okay okay. All right, this is still a vector. I want to make that really clear. It's still a vector there. I like it. So here's my, and I should call this V naught because that's going to change as you go. I like it. Okay, okay. So this is, uh, if I wanted to write it less component wise, uh, this would be V cosine alpha. Of course, since this cosine is directed along V, which would be I, and this will be J. I like it, I like it, I like it. I didn't mean for this to be a huge drawn out thing. It's all in the book, too. It's just. Uh, Breaking it down into parts and then putting it all back together. So now my R, if I want to write it, actually let's break this down into the Y and the X. So the Y, that's why they kind of got rid of this, but we're going to consider this to be, um, we're just going to put it with our Y stuff. So the Y is going to be one negative one half G, T, J, and this. I'm going to pull out the y piece of this. Yeah, plus v sine alpha j. Yeah, plus the initial displacement. I like it. And then the x is just going to be v. This should be. Should be V naught cosine alpha along the I direction. <laughs> All right. So you could do it using vector function, but we pretty much got there here. The piece we were missing here was using acceleration due to gravity. And some of you guys obviously have done this before me. You guys have done, does this look familiar for? Okay. In fact, it should look familiar for everybody because in calculus one, you do kinematics, right? Oh, thank you. Cool. All right. So if they give you a problem where they give you the angle between uh, uh, the direction you throw something or shoot something and the horizontal, then it becomes just a plug and chug situation to find its motion. I like it. Okay. So that's one little specific thing they have in this section. Another little specific thing. What was the other thing? Oh, okay, cool. This is nice. This is related to what we were doing earlier. Um, this whole thing, by the way, is on page 913. There's something a little more interesting. Just use the size of that. I got more real estate. So just recall that this, I'm going to write this a little bit better for this section. We know what this is, aren't we? What do we call this in this section? Velocity. Velocity. So we can call this V of T over the length. The book has it a little bit easier because they can use bold and non-bold. i got to be careful with that to indicate vectors and magnitudes. Um, so this says that the velocity, and why is this kind of, this should be kind of silly. Uh, I really hope you guys get this. 
This is kind of silly. The, the, I mean, of course this is true. Uh, how long is this by definition? One. So if you multiply by your speed, you're going to end up with the velocity. It, it, that's the direction you're moving. If you multiply by how, how fast you're moving, you end up with the velocity vector. It's amazing. Right, so that's what we managed to do so far. Good job, Jeff. Good job, team. Now here's where things get interesting. Uh, let me see how I can say this. Oh, yeah. So, so help me out here. What would V prime be? Thankfully, we know... dot products and, and uh, uh, function uh, products, their derivative rules are the same, essentially, right? So how would you take this guy's derivative? This is a function of time of t, of time in this case. This is also a vector function of t. So it'll so be prime t plus t prime v? Yeah, so it'll be v prime t plus v t prime. Okay, okay. Cool, I like it. So that, you know, just like anything, you've got calculations to follow and you've got concepts that apply. So it's it's you've got to be able to do both of those. So part of it is just attacking things with processes we know work. And then the other part is stepping back and saying, what does this mean that I just did? Because I know it's legal, I know it's true. So we're not quite done with this yet. I want to rewrite this using some things we know. Um, remember this. Kappa <laughs> What's the fundamental definition of that, of the curvature? Yeah, T prime. Over R prime. Okay. Yeah, it's cap. It's the best cap I could do, sorry. Um, and what is R prime? Velocity. So kappa equals t prime over velocity. So then t prime equals kappa times velocity. Which is really neat. Right, so the rate of change of the tangent vector depends on how fast you're going uh, around a curve. Does that make sense? That's, that's how to say that in English. Rate of change of the tangent vector, which is basically the velocity, but you know, this is the unit tangent vector, so is related to how quickly you're moving around a curve how, and how curvy it is. right? So if you are going 80 mile an hour and the curve is very gentle, everybody in the car is like, okay. And then you come up to another curve and it's you know dead man's curve and you try to maintain 80, is it going to be a different situation in the car? Yes. So that's what this is trying to tell you. Yes. So a few days ago, this is you know, talking about how you know, we have a velocity now. Is the velocity in that curve how much difference that is in speed? Or oh, oh, well, you, yeah, you got the velocity idea and the okay. speed idea, right? Speed is always just the magnitude at any point of the velocity vector. I like it. Oh, yeah, and I was talking about how it breaks it up into parts, maybe. That's probably what we're talking about. So that's what we're about to do with the acceleration. Um, that's what we're trying to do. All right, all right. Now, of course, what is V prime? Acceleration. So I have uh, the acceleration is equal to V tangential. So this is like <laughs> acceleration along the tangent to the motion. Plus, now, now, there's one little step that I've not put together yet. Where is it at, Jeff? You can do it. There it is. Is that velocity Here, yes. So what does this actually represent? Yeah, that's the der derivative of the magnitude of the velocity vector. So that would be acceleration. I like it. So we got ex the overall acceleration can be broken down into a tangential piece. Now I want to work with this little dude a little bit more. Plus, wait, let me write this out. 
T prime is K times V. So what do we got here? Oh, oh, oh. That's what I'm missing right here. This is the length of T prime, right? The length of T prime. So I left that out. So I got to work up to the point. I'm not quite there yet. There's just one piece I'm missing here. I don't have the T prime vector yet. I love you guys. You guys are like, what the freak? <laughs> what is this? Is this, this is not T prime. This is the length of T prime, right? What does this need? The actual T prime, not just the length of it. The actual whole vector. I like it. Why does this derivative make sense though still? Because I don't care if it's got T's in it. It's still a function of T. I can still take its derivative, right? Even if I take a length of it. Okay, I like it. So what we need is how are T prime and T related? T prime magnitude and T prime itself. And they are related, thankfully. What, what, what's, uh, what should go along with the tangent vector always? Normal vector. And what's the definition of the normal vector? No, you're thinking about binormal, which is okay. So somebody's got to think oh, about binormal. It's, uh, the length. That's why it's a unit normal. I like it. Which means that T prime, I love you guys, is equal to the normal vector times the magnitude of T prime. So that means that here I can replace that with K times V times N. That makes it a nice vector there. So we have 